patuloy na nagbibigay serbisyo. Pag-asa at saya. GNA Regional TV Kapuso ng bawat Pilipino GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Good afternoon. This is your GMA Regional TV Weekend News. The biggest, the latest, as local news matters. Kathleen Revilla. Adrian Prieto. Zen Kilantang, broadcasting live from GMA Complex in Iloilo. We'd like to welcome our Kapuso viewers from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. As well as our Kababayans all over the world watching us through GMA Pinoy TV and GMA News TV International. This afternoon, we will also be joined by GMA Regional TV correspondents, Daryl Marie Sarmiento from One Western Visayas, Jandy Esteban of One Mindanao, and Joan Ponsoy of Balitang Amyan. Kate and Zen, it's another exciting Saturday afternoon for all of us in the program. Kate? We also have other counterparts from the other regions. Joining us this afternoon, Rain Palino of RTV Bicol and Chona Caryon of Balitang Bisdak. For today's headlines, Pinoy athletes from different regions compete for gold medals. Authorities are full alert to ensure athletes and spectators' safety. Family of Hero Cup to receive financial aid. Fishing ban in sardines, herring and mackerel in the science sea started. Controversial teacher who allegedly showed porn video to students resigned. Two suspects in Bacol City Pension House fire incident nap. Typhoon Tisoy has intensified while moving slowly into par. LGUs conduct early disaster preparedness. Kabuza stars join different celebrations to welcome the Yuletide season. And let us know the 82-year-old Ilonga athlete who won the most number of medals in the Asian Games. As the 2019 Southeast Asian Games officially kicks off tonight, athletes from the different regions competing in the 38th Sea Games aim to bag gold medals in their respective sporting events. Jemay RTV Balitang Amyan and Joan Ponsoy will give us more updates live. Joan. Adrian, Filipinos are in full support for the Philippine athletes' goal to bag the gold in the 38th Southeast Asian Games. In Kapastarlac, authorities assure vigilant security and safety measures for the SEA Games delegations, both local and foreign, plus the audience who will witness the different sports at the new Clark City Sports Complex. More than 2,000 police and response personnel have been deployed in the venue. We divided it into four quadrants. Lahat ng quadrants, um, meron kaming deployed personnel led by an officer plus uh, assistant officer, meron siyang deputy. Canine dogs have been positioned in different entry and exit points of the venue. Lahat ng mga tao rito, mapapasok, dapat may ID. Kung wala may ID, mag-iwan sila ID nila dun sa gate, sa main entrance, para makapasok sila. 
Dagupan City athletes Jan Enrico Vasquez, Mark Andrew Manantan, and Jason Ramil Makaalay have their sights set on getting a medal in a karate competition. According to their coach, they had a rigid training and possessed the spirit to win. Passion nila sa karate, number one. Then yung commitment nila na proud sila na represent yung flag natin, yung country natin. Sa mga Dagupenos, ako nga pala si Joe Vasquez at ako si Mark Andrew Manantan at kami ay mga Dagupenos na lalahok sa paparating ng Southeast Asian Games 2019. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo sa pagmamahal ninyo po at sa support niyo po sa amin. In La Union, Team Pilipinas is confident that they will capture the gold as they get ready for the surfing competition in Surfing Capital of the North in San Juan, La Union. Activities for surfing competition will start tomorrow. Actually, malaki po yung pag-asa natin. We are aiming makukuha tayo ng 2 to 3 golds. Siyempre, kabisado po namin kung saan kukunin yung alon, saan puputok yung alon. Defending women's marathon champion Mary Joy Tabal is aiming for another gold medal at the 30th Southeast Asian Games. During her send-off in Cebu City, Tabal said she will do her best to reclaim the title. San Juan La Union is one of the chosen venues for the 30th Southeast Asian Games. Delegates arrived a week ago before the start of surfing competition to be held on a Monday, December 2. The police officers of La Union deployed more than 1,000 personnel and even implemented gun ban to assure the safety and security of the delegates and visitors here in the province. Adrian, live from La Union. Thanks, Joan. A cop died while trying to save students and civilians in a grenade-throwing incident inside a school in Misamis Oriental, leaving 17 others wounded. Clyde Makaskas has the details. The family of Police Master Sergeant Jason Magno will receive a death benefit amounting to over 600,000 pesos and a lifetime pension. Ato siyang tagaan o kuan na kanang proper na sa iyang weight o tabang po sa pamilya o mga benefits niya. <laughs> Many have heralded the hero's cop's sacrifice. Magnus wife remembers him saying that he would be much honored to die in service. Gusto niya mamatay siya nga ganabi tong mailhan siya sir nga ka ng dili mailhan nga bayani dili siya yung anak kay low profile manakumbana sir. Police Master Sergeant Jason Magno is the Chief of Intelligence of Inita Municipal Police Station. Police have identified the suspect who threw a grenade that exploded at the Inita College in Misamis Oriental Thursday morning. The suspect was identified as Ibrahim Bashir. Bashir had a transaction at the DNR office next to Initao College when he had a heated argument with one DNR staffer and stabbed another employee. Police said the suspect was still at DNR office when he took a hand grenade and pulled out its pin. The employees then ran out of the office towards the campus covered court which is only few meters away kita din ako na siya kana nagbaras-baras niya kana among kana among room kana 301 kana imong tanaw din nga street na ni bangag yan ang gidugong-dugong sa kutsilyo immediately police officials responded to the incident when the police began to close in on Bashir he then tossed the grenade police master sergeant Jason Magno tried to reach for the grenade to throw it away but instead covered it with his body as it exploded. The blast killed Magno and left Police Master Sergeant Alice Balido badly wounded and 16 civilians, mostly students, injured. Bashir was shot dead by responding police during the scuffle. Together with cameraman James Yap, I am Clyde Makaskas for GMA Regional TV. A teacher in Ahoy, Iloilo resigned after a controversial film showing using an alleged pornographic video to his class of grade 10 students. John Sala tells more in this report. A high school teacher of Pili National High School in Ahoy, Iloilo is at the center of a controversy after showing an alleged porn video as an instructional material to his sex education class. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. 
nag-agar kami tanan, sir, nga malanto kami kay gusto man bala naman, sir, mabalaan. The teacher refused to comment on the issue. The Department of Education Schools Division of Iloilo, on the other hand, formed an ad hoc committee to investigate the matter. Siguro, just like uh, any other teachers, ang iyang katuyuan ng sila is uh, magamit, ma-enrich ang leksyon para sa uh, ilang klase. Uh, would like to believe na buwina, no? but of course, uh, but then again, uh, hindi kita kakonclude uh, for now kung na uh, ano ang mugi maninig. However, at the said meeting, the teacher submitted his resignation letter. Well, ang uh, naka-indicate sa iyang uh, resignation para sa peace of mind niya. The Department of Education says that although they are open to the different teaching styles of teachers, instructional materials, especially those tackling sensitive topics, must undergo a process of approval to determine if it's suitable for the student's grade level. But when it comes to these particular instructional materials, it's confusing man sa part sang uh, aton nga uh, Management. The Commission on Population also said that showing such videos has a negative effect on the students. Kinahanglan, uh, grabe gid ang aton paghalong kay base uh, ma-misinterpret sang kabataan nga kagtilawan nila bla may eksperimento sila. According to the Department of Education since the teacher had already resigned, they will no longer continue with the investigation against him. However, the agency has planned out interventions for the students to help them overcome the negative effects after seeing the video. Together with cameraman Cirilo Renduque, John Sala for GMA Regional TV. In Bacolod City, two suspects who started a deadly inferno in a pension house that claimed the lives of six people, including a minor, arrested, while another fire burned down four houses and killed a five-year-old boy. More in this report. This burning motorcycle parked at the ground floor of the building caused a fire in Hava Pension House. Police investigation showed that suspects tried to get the helmet attached to the motorcycle using a lighter. They went off with the helmet, leaving the motorcycle they accidentally put on fire. Takop sa kalayo, amutong nakwa nila successfully ng nakwa nila ang helmet pero galik ay nagbili ng kalayo, so nagbedali sila from Java, no, from west to east. Nagwa sila pa katulakson, pa katuburgos para bergya ang helmet. Yesterday, police nabbed Rodolfo Inson and Venancio Valeriano, the persons identified as the ones who started the fire. Helmet nang ita na yung helmet nang ita. Tawo sa din ka. Asa gwa? Sa hindi niyo makuha ano ginobran niyo? Gising diyan sa upod yung na kalayo, wais na kabalo. Sa ang utob blang yah, no blang yah, no malumag kalayo yah tawo yah. Six perished in the fire, including the pension house owner, Christopher Hava, his 12-year-old son, Christian Miguel, Christopher's mother, Magdalena, and a family stay in Yaya, Ronalyn Dacalio. Their bodies were found at one of the pension house's rooms in the second floor of the building. The family's longtime aide, Arnold Filomeno, and another guest, a sales agent from Cebu City, Arniel Bahinting, also died in the fire. The incident is considered to be the biggest fire to hit Bacolod City this year with the highest number of casualties. Pagalong, maragid sa ato, no, kiti mostly ang chimpo ni nato mapaktan, tarikpisali sa mga monitor, boarding houses, kag sa mga dormitories, kag sa mga pension house, kag hotel. Ang safety din nato magsulod kita sa mga hotel. I-check na ito ng mga, mga exits ng kung kaso din ito maagi. Two days after the Hava Pension House fire, another fire burned down four houses in Puroksigay, Barangay 2, Bacolod City. A five-year-old boy, Renier Makapal, died in the fire. His body was found at the second floor of their house. The fire started at their neighbor's house owned by certain Belinda Quadra. Together with cameraman Reynold Castillo, I am Adrian Prietos for Jemmy Regional TV. Central Visayas recorded 26,000 dengue cases from January to November this year. Of these cases, more than 100 patients died. More on this story from JMA Regional TV Balitang Bisdak Senior Correspondent Shona Karyon live. Shona? Yes, Kate, the data from the Regional Epidemiology and Surveillance Unit of the Department of Health Region 7 showed the current status of the dengue cases in the whole region. 
According to the data, more than 26,000 dengue cases were recorded for the whole region from January 1 to November 23. 133 of these patients died. Of the total number of dengue cases, Cebu City has the biggest share at 11.8%, followed by Lapu-Lapu City with 5.4% and Mandawi City with 3.6%. Although the city of Talisay did not figure in the list, the LGU has intensified its anti-dengue campaign following the recent death of a three-year-old child due to severe dengue. Talisay City recorded 587 cases since January to November this month. The latest victim was identified as Micaela Tan, who died last November 19 at the Talisay District Hospital. Nani siya mga ako, stagnant water nga ako. So, balikunon po sa nisa mo mga dengue task force. Immediate misting operation was done by Talisay City Health in Zone 5, Kandaya, Barangay Muhon, where the victim lives. The city's health department was alarmed due to sudden rise in dengue cases with a 60% increase compared to the same period last year. Manglimpigod sila, no? even Saturdays and Sundays. Then, makakoordinate da yun sila sa Dengue Task Force. Mm. While government agencies are intensifying their anti-dengue operation, they are reminding the public to continuously do clean-ups and destroy possible breeding places of dengue-bearing mosquitoes. Kate. Thank you, Chona Karyon from Balitang Bisdak. GMA Regional TV visited Ground Zero in Barangay Daig in Tulunan, Cotabato Province and Quake Kit Barangay Maibo in Magsaysay, Davao del Sur as part of its hashtag spread kindness campaign to help those affected by strong quake in Mindanao. Sarah Hiloman Velasco tells more in this report. After launching the campaign, hashtag spread kindness tulong para sa mga biktima ng lindol sa Mindanao, donations poured in at the GMA Regional TV Davao Station from all over Mindanao. Si Gambay lang amo ang gihatod ng mga hinabang, mga relief goods. Uh, at least kana kinasingkasing sa amo ang kumpanya kapuso volunteers repacked relief goods meant for barangays in Tulunan Cotabato Province and Magsaysay Davao del Sur first stop was barangay Daig in Tulunan Cotabato Province since this barangay is in a remote area accessible by rough roads the team experienced some setbacks along the way but the Kapuso volunteers joined forces and helped push the van that carried the relief goods after getting stuck on one of the rough roads. After a few tries, the team finally succeeded and continued traversing towards the quick hit barangay. As the team reached ground zero in Tulunan, it was heartbreaking to see houses that collapsed including the Barangay's Elementary School, now just a piece of roof on the ground, and the Barangay Hall that is now abandoned. Despite this, it was also heartwarming to see over 500 families affected in the Barangay still hopeful and determined. And as the team handed out the relief goods to each of them, their faces lit up in gratitude. An evacuee was emotional, recalling the pain when she saw her two houses, which she spent many years building, fall down in a blink of an eye. But she was still thankful for the relief goods that could help their family with their everyday needs. Kapuso volunteers then proceeded to another quick hit barangay in Davao del Sur, Barangay Maibo in Magsaysay Town, where more than 300 families from the Blaan tribe also received relief goods and hygiene kits. With the continued support of all Kapuso donors in Mindanao, GMA Regional TV One Mindanao thanks those kind souls who lent time and effort to reach out to Quake Hit residents in Mindanao. Daghang salamat, Kapuso! Together with Cyril Chavez and cameraman Joe Pascual, I am Sara Hilomen Velasco for GMA Regional TV. The Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Region 6 assures public that there will be enough supply of fish despite the three-month close season in the Visayan Sea. Daryl Marie Sarmiento has the details live. Daryl? Adrian, fishermen are prohibited from catching three species of fish in the Visayan Sea to allow them to flourish in number. 
The bee farm made a call to the public to religiously observe the closed season or fishing ban on sardines, herrings, and mackerel in the Visayan Sea. Visayan Sea, which is one of the country's largest fishing grounds, is surrounded by the islands of Cebu, Negros, Masbate, Panay, and Leyte. According to BFAR, the observance of closed season has a huge effect which coincides with the breeding season of these types of fish. With the management, with the effort we have, uh, naka-recover. Even the commercial sector was saying to us na damo ang isda subong. However, some fish vendors worry that this may cause a lack of supply in the market and may affect their businesses. Pektado kami na, wain na may nagbaligyan isda. Wain na may nagbaligyan isda. Medyo subong ganyan, medyo duta yung isda. But according to BFAR, fish supply is still higher compared to what is being consumed. And even during close season, fish supply is still 14% sufficient. BFAR urges fishermen to be cooperative and the public to be more vigilant, especially since there are still cases of illegal fishing in the region. Para maalaw ang gagmay nga isda maglagko, kag ang mga nagabuso nga isda nga magbuto, nga mag dugang sa populasyon sa isda kagon maglag ko ang isda para gini sa mga isda para magtaas ang ilang income the band started last november 15 and will end on february 15 next year Adrian Bifar added that banning will not only increase the fishery in production, but will also help in conserving our marine resources for our future generation. Adrian. Thank you, Daryl. Residents of a coastal area in Barangay Gumasa in Glan, Sarangani Province found a dead body of a giant sperm whale. Our jail relator tells more in this report. The dead giant sperm whale was already in a state of decomposition when found by the residents by the seashore. Davao-based American bone collector Daryl Blatchley conducted an necropsy to determine the whale's possible cause of death. Blatchley's team recovered a plastic cup and pointed bird's beak. The whale weighs 10 tons and measures 11 meters in length, which made it harder to extricate from the beach using a backhoe. Now, we, don't, we can't rule the cause of death from the isalang gabaso, so hindi pwede pagsabi daw ito lang ng cause of death. Pero it's never good to be finding plastic inside of the whale. There are already nine dead whales found in Davao and Sarangani Bay this year. And the sixth time that plastic material was found in the stomach of the mammal. In Dagupan City, Tondaligan Long Beach is one of the attractions of the city. But the local government has been closely monitoring the area after the discovery of leachate or liquid from a controlled dump site that has been polluting the Lingayen Gulf. According to the city's waste management division, a hectare of mixed waste was found near the shoreline. The local government will allot 57 million pesos from its 2020 budget for the waste management services, including howling of garbage near the shoreline. Ang focus natin is tanggalin yung about one third ng size ng dump site that is closest to the water, yung malapit do sa tubig, dahil dun pinakamarami ang ang uh, yung uh, what do you call this yung leachate na napuputa do sa tubig I am Orgil Relator for GMA Regional TV Here's an early Christmas gift for workers in Central and Western Visayas. The Regional and National Tripartite Wages and Productivity Board has approved an increase in workers' daily salary. Let's hear the details through this report of Alan Domingo. The Regional Tripartite Wages and Productivity Board, or RTWPB, in Region 7 and Region 6 has approved the salary increase of minimum wage earners. Last October 22, the National Tripartite Wages and Productivity approved the 15 pesos to 30 pesos wage hike for workers in Western Visayas and an 18 peso wage adjustment in Cebu. The increase took effect last November 26. <laughs> Based on the approved wage order, employees from establishments with less than 10 workers will get an additional 15 pesos, making the new wage rates in Western Visayas at 310 pesos per day. Employees from establishments with more than 10 workers will now receive 395 pesos per day from 365 pesos. Agricultural workers will get a 20 pesos hike or 315 pesos per day salary. 
For Metro Cebu workers from 386 pesos, they will now receive 404 pesos daily minimum wage. The wage board also approved the increase of wages of house help or kasambahay. For class A sector, a helper will be paid 5,000 pesos per month and 4,000 pesos outside Metro Cebu and the provinces in Central Visayas. For ordinary workers, the 18 pesos increase is a big help for their families, especially that prices of commodities have also increased. May on tag matuma na, boss. Kaya nga naman, sir. Para ang tao ba na ay makuha sa pagpanarbaho, ang benepisyo ay importante ko. Kuwang, kuwang yun. Kuwang yun siya. Ay mahal nga malalitan yun. I am Alan Domingo for JMA Regional TV. Typhoon Tisoy has entered the Philippine area of responsibility this afternoon. Let us check the latest track of the typhoon from Pagasa. Good afternoon and this is our latest weather update. Northeast Monsoon or Amihan is currently affecting the whole area of Luzon. Meanwhile, we are closely monitoring a typhoon with international name Kamuri outside our, our area of responsibility. It is estimated at 1,315 kilometers east of southern Luzon with maximum sustained winds of 150 kilometers per hour and gustiness that may reach up to 185 kilometers per hour. It is moving westward at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour and expected to make landfall at southern Luzon, particularly at Bicol region going up to central Luzon on Tuesday, that's December 3, 2019. The rest of Visayas and Mindanao will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to our localized thunderstorm, while Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rains also due to the Northeast Monsoon. For more information, you can visit and subscribe to our official social media account in Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, or you may visit our official website, bagong.pagasa.dost.gov.ph. Reporting from Pagasa Mactan, Visayas, DOST, this is Joseph, Gerald, and Merlas. Have a great weekend. Emergency response teams of different LGUs in Camarines Sur are now on alert as Typhoon Tisoy gains strength and it's forecasted to bring moderate to heavy rains over Bicol region. Rain Palino of Jemmy RTV Bicol will give us more update live. Rain. Adrian, preparations are being done here in Camarines Sur for the possible impact of Typhoon Tisoy as it enters Philippine area of responsibility. Just yesterday, the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office conducted an emergency meeting regarding Typhoon Kamuri. It was participated by various agencies such as Philippine Coast Guard, Army, BFP, PNP, and City and Municipal Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Officers in Camarines Sur. Based on the weather forecast, Typhoon Kamuri has a similar track to previous typhoons in Ming and Glenda. Typhoon Kamuri is expected to landfall in Catanduanes on Tuesday. Albay and Camarines provinces will also be affected by strong winds and heavy rains. Meanwhile, in Tinamba, Camarines Sur, the Municipal Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office started directing barangay captains for pre-incident planning. They have also advised school principals to ready classrooms for evacuation purposes. The LGU of Tinamba has also evacuation center which could accommodate 15 to 20 families. Equipments for search and rescue are now on standby. Ang terrain namin dito, kompleto kami sa hazard. Kasi may coastal barangay kami, mga bulubundukin, at saka yung mga low-lying areas to. He added that LGU monitors some barangays. One of them is Barangay Mananaw, which recently experienced minor landslide due to Typhoon Ramon. Aling Nelly, who lives in the coastal area, is worried about her family's livelihood. Mayo maning sirang haling sabang. Dumang kami na bakal ning ano, pigaalang ni. As of today, quick response team of VSWD Bicol were alerted and advised to be prepared for the possible augmentation support needed. Adrian. Live from Naga City, thank you, Rain.
The Pascua na Zamboanga 2019 officially starts, showcasing the beautiful and grand Christmas display in the city. Jandia Esteban of GMA RTV One Mindanao has the details live from Zamboanga City. Jandi. Caitlin, Mexican Filipino Fiesta is this year's theme for Pascua na Zamboanga. Meanwhile, our Capusa in Nueva Ecija were delighted with the presence of our Capusa stars. The Yulitide season has officially opened in Zamboanga City with a grand switch on of its grandiose Christmas lights display at the City Hall and surrounding landmarks on Thursday evening. The 112-year-old City Hall is adorned with curtain-like Christmas lights. So with the 60-foot giant Christmas tree in the middle of the town plaza. The theme of this year's Christmas display is a Mexican-Filipino fiesta made more special with decorations flown in from Pampanga worth 3 million pesos. The night market also opened at the Veterans Memorial Shrine beside the City Hall featuring food and products of Zamboanga. People of different ages were awe and instantly felt the spirit of the holiday season. I would like uh, to invite everyone, uh, dumalo po kayo sa ating lungsod ng Sambuanga. Ako po ay nag, uh, uh, nanais na makapunta po kayo dito upang makita natin na pangkamtan ang ating kapaskuhan. Thousands of Kapuso joined the celebration of the Grand Christmas Festival in Gapan City, Nueva Ecija, which features the lighting of a giant Christmas tree, giant Ferris wheel, tunnel of lights, and an awe-inspiring fireworks display. GMA Regional TV joined the celebration of the Novo Ejecanos. Crowd welcomed the GMA's newest all-female quartet, XOXO, composed of the Clash alumni Riel, Dani, Lyra, and Mel. The audience sang along with a Kapuso honk, Benjamin Alves. While Anakni Waray versus Anakni Biday star, Kate Valdez, wowed Novo Ejecanos with her OPM number. The crowd went wild as Kapuso heartthrob, Miguel Tan Felix, serenaded them with his Kilig field performance. In Cabanatuan City, the audience welcomed Asia's multimedia star, Alden Richards, and the cast of GMA Talibaba's The Gift. Alden gave recognition to Cabanatuan Police, Major Jaime Ferrer, who showed a heroic act by returning lost money amounting to 50,000 pesos to the owner. Pinapatunayan lang ng mga spread kindness recipients natin na doing good and being good and being kind to everyone and to everything that you do goes a long way. Meanwhile, hundreds of Kapuso fans are packed right now here in KCC Mall in Zamboanga City for today's Kapuso Mall Show. The lead cast of GMA's One of the Bays, Ken Chan, Rita Daniela, and Edgar Allen Guzman, will give their Zambongueño fans more reason to enjoy their weekend with their song and dance numbers. Zambongueño are very excited to see their idols, but while waiting, they are um, enjoying right now the fun field activities and games hosted by our Kapuso comedian, May Bautista. Caitlin. Thank you, Jandia Seban of One Mindanao. As the 30th Sea Games opens today, Filipino athletes aspire to win the gold. Let us get to know an Ilonga athlete who got the most number of medals in the Asian Games. Here's the story of inspiration of the Asian Swim Queen. Eighty-two-year-old Heidi Coloso Espino, a native of Duenas, Iloilo, still enjoys her love for swimming. Her ability has not dwindled after all these years. Espino was dubbed as the Asian Swim Queen for being the Filipino athlete with the most number of medals won in the Asian Games. She garnered a total of 10 Asian Game medals from the 1954 Games held in the Philippines, the 1958 Games in Tokyo, Japan, and the 1962 Games in Indonesia. Espino brought home three gold, five silver, and two bronze medals from 100-meter freestyle and butterfly events. She also represented the country in the 1960 Olympics in Rome, Italy. A total of 120 medals are displayed in her house. Espino started her swimming career at the age of 13, and her father served as her inspiration. Naging popular, naging successful. Tungod nga, mapisan sila. 
ikaw sila nga kay may ngalan ka na kay balaan ko man na may potential man ko na ko sila sa tatay ko sige mag-practice ka dire sa Iloilo and then you go to Manila tiya mo na kay kung dito ko no madu, malapad ang field nga maanuhan mo in order to be successful She also added that being an athlete is not easy because you need to make a lot of sacrifices and have confidence and determination. She also has a message to young athletes, especially those participating in the 30th Southeast Asian Games. You have to work hard for it. In everything you do, kinanglan, yid ang dedication. In 2016, Espino was inducted into the Philippine Sports Hall of Fame in recognition of her achievements in swimming. These days, the sports legend spends her time teaching her grandchildren how to swim. Together with cameraman Rumal Porquia, Zen Kinatang for GMA Regional TV. Wow, long live our swim queen. That is a great reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that no matter what age you are in your life, you are still able and you are still capable. Right, Zen? That's right, Adrian. So to all our athletes, continue to strive hard and bring home the gold. Yes, you know what, Adrian and Zen, because of determination and dedication, we could always reach the goals that we want to attain. Right there. You know what, it's a, such a great feeling that no matter what your age is, you know, come to think of it, age is just a number. And speaking of number, Kapusa, 25 days ago before Christmas. You can watch this episode and more on JMA Regional TV's official YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button to get the hottest news from the regions. That was the biggest and the latest news from the regions. Thank you for joining us from around the Philippines as well as our Kapusa abroad. This has been JMA Regional TV Weekend News, where local news matters. Happy, Happy weekend, weekend, mga kapuso! kapuso!